I looked out over the water, but there was no sign of Bill anywhere. All I could see, all the way to the horizon, was the smooth, unbroken surface of the Caribbean. We had arrived on the Dutch island of Bonaire a week earlier. It was our first time back since our honeymoon trip in late February 2020, and we were making up for lost time. While Bill windsurfed, I sat in the shade and I chatted with friends I hadn't seen for three years. We snorkeled and we hiked, and we took our annual selfie holding glasses of my signature pina coladas. Late one afternoon, we decided to head over to the west side of the island for a quick snorkel. We chose the Invisibles dive site because it has easy water access and lots of cool stuff to see close to shore. We had been there a week earlier with some friends, but this time it was just the two of us alone on the beach. Bill and I have very different snorkeling styles. I prefer to hang out on the surface watching the colorful schools of fish swimming by. Bill, on the other hand, wears a weighted diving belt so that he can hover on the bottom shooting video of all the sea creatures. We've arrived at an arrangement where we snorkel together for half an hour, then he goes off on his own for half an hour while I stay on the beach just kind of doing beach things. It works for both of us. The water entry that afternoon was trickier than usual. The tide was low and there were jagged, exposed rocks on the shoreline. Normally we just swim over the rocks, but that afternoon we had to pick our way really carefully through the slippery outcrops. We snorkeled together for half an hour, then I made my way very slowly back to the beach and Bill swam away. When he wasn't, home, when he wasn't back after half an hour, I wasn't worried. He's a strong swimmer and the water appeared calm. But then another half hour passed and I knew something had to be wrong. I scanned the water searching for the yellow tip of his snorkel or the splash of his fins, but he was nowhere to be seen. I started to imagine everything that might have gone wrong. A leg cramp, a riptide, or maybe he had got caught up in a web of sargassum the floating mass of seaweed that was taking over the island. I was frantic and I just didn't know what to do. I didn't have my phone, but if I did, who would I even call? I had the car keys, but what if I left and Bill came back and I wasn't there? And worst of all, what would I do if I never found him? Sunset wasn't that far off and there was absolutely no one else in sight. If only we had done something else besides snorkel, anything. And just then, a National Park pickup truck pulled up. I ran up to the truck, half expecting to see Bill in the, in the bed of the truck, but it was empty. It turned out that the driver wasn't a park ranger. She was a biologist who had only pulled over so that she could take a look at the reef. I poured out my story to her and she offered to drive up and down the coast looking for Bill. I told her that he was wearing a red rash guard and had a white beard, which as I say it now, sounds to me like half the old Dutch guys on the island. And she drove off towards the south, the direction where Bill was headed the last time I saw him. While I waited, I paced up and down the island, not knowing what to do. I I just, I was, I was frantic. And just when I was about to give up hope, the truck pulled back into the parking area, and this time, Bill was in the way back, miraculously alive and well. I felt like I could, I could breathe again. When we were in the car, Bill told me the whole story. He had started to swim back to the beach where I was waiting, but the current was too strong, and so he had no choice but to drift along with it. Next, he tried to get out at, this, at the next two beaches, but the rocks were just too slippery, and he couldn't. When he told me that, all I heard was he couldn't get out of the water. He eventually ended up at a dive site way down the coast. As he was swimming toward shore, he ran into a giant net that was there to catch sargassum. All I could hear when he said that was he was trapped in a giant net.
Fortunately, he was able to push the net down and swim over it and scramble out of the water. He was just about to walk all the way back to, to Invisibles, the dive site where I was waiting, when the park um, pickup truck drove by. The driver spotted his red shirt and his white beard and yelled out the window, are you Bill? Your wife is looking for you, which has to be the understatement of the century. <laughs> so I didn't understand how Bill could stay so calm in the face of danger, and he didn't understand why I was so freaked out. Also, he insisted that since he wasn't really lost, he wasn't really found. <laughs> and so when I heard that, I smacked him on the arm, and I rolled my eyes, and the second we got back to the house, I made another batch of my signature pina coladas, <laughs> but this time, double strength. Yeah.